Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> well, you're going to have a bevy of fights take place, and it'll give us an opportunity to look at a champion at 168 pounds, <clears throat> James DeGale, and compare him and contrast him to Badu Jack, who also holds a title in the division, as well as Lucien Butte, who just fought James DeGale, who used to rule the roost in the division, and Wajelio Medina, who knocked out Jelly in Love, right? Who, of course, was fighting with the Mayweather Gym and was highly regarded by the sport. Now, I believe, out of these four fighters, James DeGale is a cut above, right? In my opinion, he's the best in the division. So, for the hardcore boxing fans out there, as you watch these four fighters, let's talk about why James DeGale is the best, right? Badu Jack, to me, is robotic. He's a straight-line fighter, right? He's that old car in the driveway where, once it gets going, it's coming forward, right? He beat Anthony Durrell, but I would say Anthony Durrell has shown in the past, and I know he looked great yesterday, but he's shown in the past to have a problem with pacing, hasn't he? There have been Anthony Durrell fights where, for whatever reason, he just hasn't been energetic in the second half of fights. I would argue that against Badu Jack, he had the worst night of his career. He was not energetic in the beginning of the fight or the end of the fight. Right? I thought Badu Jack, and I know he's worked hard to get where he is, but I thought Badu Jack fought an uninspired champ who just didn't have the volume and who himself relied on power more than technique. Right? To me, Badu Jack is more predictable than either Lucien Butte, who I believe would have beaten Badu Jack easily in his prime, or James DeGale. Let's talk about Lucien Butte. You know, ever since Butte went over to the ropes against Carl Froch in a fight I thought he would win. Butte hasn't been the same. <clears throat> Understand, in terms of car crashes in the sport of boxing, that was one of the biggest car crashes in recent memory. Understand, Butte fighting Carl Froch. Think about it. I believe Froch is a boxing hall of famer. Fighting Carl Froch in the United Kingdom, a betting country. Right? You can go online and legally place bets in the UK. Right? Butte was the favorite. That's how big Butte was viewed at the time. He was favored over Carl Froch in the UK. Butte comes out, he goes over to the side of the ring. Now, at the time, Butte was the kind of guy who was comfortable wherever he was in the ring. Right? He'd be able to, you know fight you in the middle of the ring, he'd be able to go over to the side of the ring and hang out. I know he had a real bad end to his fight against Labredo Andrade. I know we got caught at the end of that fight, right? Wins the fight thanks to the referee in part, but he gets caught at the end of that fight, and of course he's up against the ropes. But understand, before the Frotch fight, Boutte would routinely go up against the ropes and outbox an opponent, right? That's a veteran move that, you know, allows you to rest your legs. It also allows you to leverage the advantage you have in terms of boxing in the pocket, right? The other guy is where you want him, right? Think Ali, George Foreman, right? If you Look at the rumble in the jungle. You're going to notice that Ali, with his back up against the ropes, was, many, was winning many of those rounds. Well, ever since Carl Froch deflated Lucien Butte, Butte hasn't been the same. 
right? He no longer uses the hold ray, right? He tries to stay in the middle of the ray. He tries to take the lead. He doesn't want you taking the lead, right? He had a slow motion fight against Jean Pascal. It was clear that he wasn't quite ready for that matchup. Now, I thought he looked good against James DeGale, but that's a tale of two fights, isn't it? The first half of the fight, Butte, who's still recovering, mentally, in my opinion, from the Frotch beating, and that's what it was, a beating, right? Looked tentative against DeGale early in the fight. Understood he couldn't stay in the pocket, Right, have the Gale take the lead. He couldn't cede the lead to the Gale and actually win rounds. So then midway through that fight, he decides to step on the gas a little bit. I view Boutte as a fighter who's still on the comeback trail. He isn't who he once was. Right? He looks like a guy who needs to keep himself in the middle of the ring. He doesn't trust himself up on the ropes. Right? He looks like a guy who needs to lead, who needs to keep you busy because he doesn't trust his ability to wait to counter you. Right? As I've said, if I thought Boutte was still prime Boutte, I would take him over Badu Jack. Right? Because I don't know exactly how far along the comeback trail Boutte is, I'm going to be a little bit hesitant here. Understand, the Gale went to Canada and beat Boutte in Canada. Now let's talk about Medina. I'll just say this. I know there are boxing columnists who have fallen in love with Jaylee and Love. Right? I have my doubts about him. When you watch Jaylee and Love fights, do you feel that he's dictating tempo? Do you feel the fight is being fought at a pace that he likes? Or do you get the feeling that tempo and spacing are out of his hands? That he's one of these guys who looks cute in the ring but really can't control the flow of the action? Right? Isn't he really, in some ways, an American version? of George Groves. Well, Medina beats Love, puts himself on the map. But what I saw was Medina fighting one style. Understand Medina, much better on his front foot, isn't he? Needs to hunt you down, right? I don't think the guy's game holds together <coughs> if you get him on his back foot. If he's not winging big-time punches from behind that high guard of his, and it's high, isn't it? He has his hands up here, doesn't he? Right? If he's not trying to hit home runs, will he know what to do if James DeGale puts a shoulder in his chest and dares him to fight backing up? Right? I don't get the feeling that Medina is a guy who, you know, can hit you when you're in certain places in the ring. In other words, yeah, if you're in the corner or up against the ropes like Jelly and Love allowed himself to be, you're a sitting duck for Medina. But I don't think he can hit you if you're moving. In other words, he can nail you if you're a stationary target. He can't hit you if you're moving. Now let's talk about the Gale. Right? The Gale is simply put one of the best fighters in the entire sport. Right? I know a lot of people are in love with Guillermo de Gundio. I think the Gale's a better fighter. I know a lot of people are in love with Roman Gonzalez. I think the Gale's a better fighter. What makes him better? You know, boxing really is mostly mental. When you come across a James the Gale, you understand 
that this young man is out thinking his opponent. Right? He's looking at you in the early rounds and he's figuring out what you do. He's figuring out what you can't do. And then he forces you to fight that fight. Right? The Gale's three-dimensional. He can fight you coming forward. Few people in the sport have his inside game. Right? What's an inside game? It's when a guy just decides, look, I'm done backing up. Let me come forward. Let me get right here on a guy. And he can still throw combinations. Right? Understand, as the gale comes in, he'll switch. I believe he's the best in the sport at switching. Guys like Terrence Crawford, Tyson Fury, will switch from right to left. Then they'll fight you as a left-hander. Then they'll switch back. They'll fight you as a right-hander. Right? They'll be in a stance. They'll be in a southpaw stance. They'll fight you that way for a while. Think about how much more dangerous both of those guys would be, and I consider both of those guys to be among boxing's very best. If they could switch from left to right in the middle of a combination... That's James DeGale. Watch his feet. He's unorthodox. You can't teach this. Right? He'll have his left foot out front. Right? And he'll be throwing punches. Devastating. Left hook. Uppercuts. Etc. Then he'll just lean and put his right foot forward. And you'll notice that he's still throwing punches with authority. That both of his hands, if possible, <clears throat> are his dominant hand. Right? More importantly, he's not hardwired. The best part of the Gale is the fact that, like Floyd Mayweather, he can adjust to his opponent. So if the Gale, he's reading you, then he's doing things in response to you. It's not just counter punching, right? It's counter strategy, counter stance, whatever it takes. Go back to the Brandon Gonzalez fight. You're going to see the Gale during that fight changing the angles of his punches. It looks crazy. Looks like he's just slapping you or slinging punches. Now, those are hard punches on a guy who DeGale has figured out is blocking 90% of the shots. So what does DeGale do? He hits you in the 10% where you're not blocking. Right? Think about what I said earlier about Jelly and Love. His inability to control the tempo of the fight against, let's say, an opponent who's talented. Right? An opponent who could get out of the slow lane. Go back and look at the Gale against Boutte in the early rounds of their last fight. The Gale comes to Canada. He takes the crowd out of the first half of the fight. Boutte is fighting his fight. Right? So, as you watch these fights... I want you to compare and contrast what the Gale does to Medina. I expect the Gale to win that fight with the fight Jelly and Love fought against Medina. I think Medina is going to look extremely limited. I think Medina is going to end up getting dropped in the fight. The Gale is the kind of guy who can turn on the power when he wants. Right? He stopped a host of guys. He doesn't look like a knockout puncher, but he hits you so cleanly that it takes out guys like Brandon Gonzalez, like Marco Antonio Parabell, like a host of others, right? In the Badu Jack fight, <clears throat> right, you need to view that fight as a fight between a more talented Lucien Boutte, who is now older. Boxing's a cruel sport. 
right? I'm sure Boutte every week thinks about that Carl Froch beating he took, right? The question is whether, just like the race car driver who is circling the track after the crash, the race after the crash, right? Or who visits, you know, the track and has to get over the bad memory of whatever, you know, uh, car problems and, you know, shaky wheel or what have you. It's just like any of us feel if you've been in a car crash, when you're driving by the scene of your prior accident later, right? If Boutte can shake off the nerves, I don't see anything in Badu Jack's game that's going to stop him from taking the fight, right? I'm not going to bet on the fight. I'm talking as a fan here, right? Badu Jack is younger, not as young as people think, but he's younger than Boutte, right? This is his moment. He's fought his entire life. He has gotten the title, right? He's active in the ring. You know where he's going to be. He's going to be throwing punches. He's not going to be hoping for the judges to give him the decision, right? But all I'm saying is here you have the overachiever in Badu Jack against the more talented guy who's trying to reconstruct his career and whose ego won't allow him, quite frankly, to fight easier competition. Right? Lucien Boutte is a guy who is trying to come back by fighting people like Jean Pascal, James DeGale, and now reigning champion Badu Jack. Right? This is the hard way, folks. This is the artist who has decided, hey, look, I'm going to come back and compete against other Oscar winners because I need to get back on top of the game. Right, so I think the Gale is going to show you on tonight's card that he's the best at 168. That it's not close. That Medina is a limited front foot, first flat footed slugger who can't handle movement and who can't handle being backed up. Right, I think Lucien Boutte is going to start the fight roughly like he did against the Gale, right? Because I think the guy has jitters. But understand, if he gets in a rhythm, I know he's a prohibitive underdog here, right? I think he's a greater than two to one underdog. If he gets into a rhythm, don't be surprised if he doesn't leave the ring with the belt. And don't be surprised if his next move isn't to call out the Gale for a rematch or other big hitters, right? That's just the way Boutte rolls, right? He just cannot picture himself not fighting elites. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. As I said before, too, I'm expecting Boutte, excuse me, I'm expecting the Gale to put on a show. I'll be surprised if his fight is close, right? Don't sleep on the Gale as a puncher, right? The problem with the Gale is he's a little bit of a chess player. He hurts you, then he backs off a little bit. He drops Andre Durrell early, figures he has the fight, then he backs off a little bit. There's a little bit of dare I say, Roy Jones Jr., prime Roy Jones Jr., in James DeGale. So predicting a knockout is hard to do, even though DeGale has power. But what I'll say is I'll be surprised if Medina doesn't get knocked down. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.